Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders. If you want to see more videos like this one, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. The fancy YouTube algorithms will rank us higher and enable us to keep making great content for you. Thank you for your time, now let's get into the video. Okay coders, in this video we are going to go over the new features and fixes within the latest release of Unity 5.6.1. I will be sure to link to this page on Unity's website in the description below if you would like to check out the updates for yourself. So let's get right into it. The first thing we're going to look at is the improvements, obviously. Okay, so the first improvement we can see is the fixed capture of EGL calls when using Molly Graphics Debugger. Now, EGL ties in with rendering graphics on Android, I believe, so that is pretty cool, but it is a little confusing that this is not listed as a fix, but rather an improvement, but that's okay. All right, we now have a function that allows for the compression of cube maps through scripts. We also have some improvements for handling textures and metal. They added an app store category for the info.plist generation, which is pretty cool and possibly helpful. Okay, big one here. And I've actually run into this quote unquote bug myself when I was doing my first look at Visual Studio on Mac video. They added in the ability to double click a script in Unity. Now, based on this short description, it looks like rather than opening up the file that we clicked on, the SLN file or the solution file will be launched, which allows for the IntelliSense to work seamlessly. So two thumbs way up for that one. Not that opening the SLN file directly was difficult, but it was a little annoying. Networking in Unity has been updated with some statistical functions being added in that allow for the measuring of bandwidth in a variety of ways. Okay, now we're moving on to some Physics 2D improvements. An editor tooltip has been added in for the edge radius property of some 2D colliders. Users can now turn on or off collision or trigger exit callbacks when a 2D collider is disabled. The API has been updated to give us some more information on the contact filter 2D, which could be useful. We also now have some additional improvements made to the contact filter 2D. Unity Ads has been updated, and finally for the improvements, we have two improvements to the video, giving us greater error reporting on incompatible files, and the API docs for this have been updated as well. So let's go ahead and move on to the changes. There are only two changes here. Basically one is just 2D sprite batching has been enabled by default, and for VR, GPU skinning has been enabled for Android VR. They do make a note here that this is in fact experimental, so best to be careful with this one. Now to look at the fixes, and there are a lot of fixes if you look at this page, so we're just going to highlight some of the big ones. So let me scroll back up to the top here, and I'm not gonna try to highlight each one here, I'm just gonna go over some of the really big fixes that I have notes on. So one of the first ones is an occasional crash was fixed that arose when sprite renderer dot size was set multiple times in a single frame. A rare, another one is a rare crash that occurred when seeking an audio file was fixed. A fix was implemented for the Android application building with the latest Android SDK. A another crash was fixed when using an avatar built in 5.5 or, or earlier. Unity also fixed the crash in prepare frame due to deactivating the animator in script. A fix was implemented for performance regression when building many small asset bundles. Another crash that was fixed was dealing with manually deleting the occlusion data. We have another fix here for editor crashes when using old OpenGL drivers. Pretty interesting one now. We have a fix for an issue on PS Vita that causes the default sky to be black. We have another fix for a crash that's, uh, that occurs during reparenting of a rigid body 2D. A memory leak was actually fixed inside of the UGUI. And finally, the last one that I think is pretty important is an editor crash was fixed. The crash would occur when performing a bloom gesture while using HoloLens remoting. So we've got uh, you know a lot of fixes in here, like I said, that deal with a lot of different things, um, you know, varying from rigid bodies to VR. And that is that is just a few of the bugs. I just really wanted to go over the ones that you know may impact you the most. As you can see here, we've got particles. Physics 2D, you know, there's just really a lot to go over and I don't want to bore you with that. So I recommend that if you are interested in seeing exactly what was fixed, that you check out the webpage that lists all of these fixes provided by Unity. Also, let us know if you would like to see additional videos covering the updates to Unity in the future. They update Unity fairly regularly, about every couple of months, and we've discussed creating these types of videos before, but this is the first one we've created. I know it's, you know, really just sort of reading off the web page and giving a little bit of background information on some of the 
bugs and improvements, but hopefully you found it useful. Now this video is outside of our norm, but we are constantly trying new things that could be helpful to our community. So definitely let us know if you're interested in seeing things like this in the future, or if you're just like, hey, I'd rather go read it myself, that's cool too. So that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. As always, thanks for watching.